Amen. Thank God for the worship and the worship team. Let us thank the song. For my God is the ancient of days. Nice song, right, folks? We believe a God that belongs to yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and to call us future. The God that we have is an everlasting God. Will you take a, say a big amen, folks? <coughs> Don't be shy, lah. Don't leave it to me. <coughs> okay, welcome those who are online joining us for this moment of worship. Glad that you make time to be with us and so-called be into the worship with us. This morning, I have kind of put our meditation team at Jesus' Jesus's ministry, Dash the Kingdom of God. Of course, we like to recognize that we are in the season of kingdom tide, uh, more to reflect uh, the kingdom of God before us. So if you look at scripture, you can see already Jesus is still very focused and mindful of why he was here on earth. He is to fulfill that very mission that God had placed upon his hearts to the whole of humanity, to the people of God, Israel, to share and to lead people to the kingdom of God. And the text uh, given for me to do the meditation is John chapter 6, verse 29, which says, our Jesus answered and said, the work of God is this. Kind of you can see uh, when you read chapter 6, there is this dialogue that Jesus is having with the people. And he reminded them that the work of God is this. All right, not this and that, but to believe in the one, meaning Jesus himself, that God has sent. <clears throat> so look at it very carefully about this uh, theme of this text. The reminder is to believe the one that God has sent. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this hour of worship that you have placed us before you. A moment that we do treasure and appreciate that we can put aside our activities, our routine, perhaps even some of our struggles and pain to be here and wait upon you. And so we ask that this moment of meditation that your word will be the source of encouragement, uh, challenge, and bring life back to us in a very spiritual sense, and to know you, and to make you known to. So speak to the people here, Lord, for all of us, thy servants, here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, as I put here in the introduction, first thing first, Singapore has a newly elected president. Uh, of course, it's not me. Lah, huh? <laughs> I will be very busy not here already. But we want to <clears throat> congratulate the uh, incoming president, president-elect, uh, Mr. Taman. And I just watched him over the news last night that he was so busy walk about uh, places in Tampani, Mersing and things like that. But I don't see in Amokyo. Uh, so folks, you got to wait for a while before he make his uh, visit here to see us. Perhaps maybe one day he will drop by and say hello to you and to us. How nice, right, folks? Anyone have taken a photo with him so far? No. But there was a, a church sister show me just now. Pastor, I got his photo. But that was one month ago. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, that was a special occasion that she had uh, at that moment. And I guess really a lot of uh, celebration for the incoming president. And uh, let me put this a uh, personal note. Don't ask me who I voted for. <laughs> Neither do I ask you who you voted for. All right. Maybe you know I know, lah, that's all. But I must tell you, my wife doesn't know who I voted for. So, so 
It's a secret. I, I never ask her also. We just pray first. We say, Lord, you lead us and your will be done. So it's good to really thank God for the uh, smooth running of the uh, whole election yesterday. Uh, unlike we hear from other countries, there are crises here and there, even after the election. <clears throat> and to me, I really treasure the way that uh, God put us in this nation. Uh, we have the shelling of uh, community uh, Life, especially to the COVID situation. And I really treasure the moment we are given the freedom of worship here in our nation. Correct, folks? We don't have to worship God, say, underground or in a hiding place or get arrested and so on. But we thank God and treasure every moment we have on Sunday. So, folks, try not to miss Sunday. It's a given thing, right? Uh, don't go elsewhere. And, uh... Now, I don't stop you for travelling, really, or work. You have your schedule. But as far as possible, the inbuilt freedom given to us. Don't take for granted, neither do we want to waste it. Once a week only, alright? Just a word of encouragement here. Lah. I hope to see more of you every Sunday. Only 52 weeks, all right? Okay, plus others like Easter or Christmas and things like that. Well, let me go back to what we need to do this morning. <coughs> and also, oh, before I forget, so election is over. You know what next? Yeah, now we can focus on the church agenda, lady, with a peace of mind. Uh, no need to think whether we need to go to the polling station early or late or look for the weather. So next event that before us will be our fun fair. I want to tell those folks or many to come. It's a really heartwarming experience to hear your participation. I already started in disputing the flyers with a smiling face. We have seen photographs of that. Bless your heart. And uh, please continue to good work. Uh, this meditation has something to do with that, to remind you too about uh, blessing the community with what we have planned to come this coming Saturday. And you know the official time is from 10 a.m. to 10 p uh, 4 p.m. Got it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we don't work 12 hours. <laughs> Sorry. So only at like 10 to 4 in the afternoon. So we do look forward to your participation and coming. Uh, I will say a bit more in the sermon text here. This morning, truly, our focus is really on Jesus' ministry. Uh, you can see how he mingled with the people, just like an incoming president. <coughs> then you can see how the Lord from day one reminded us He has sent His only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to come to the world. Uh, not rah rah here, but really look at our human situation. We need a Savior. And so a Savior has come into our midst. I'm sure you learned it through the scripture and the Bible study that Jesus had the desires always to dwell in the hearts of men and women or even to the younger generation, that no one should be spared from the great salvation that God has given to us. As the scriptures say in Luke 19, 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The lost. His idea here is to come and look for you, just like a shepherd looking for the missing sheep, and save those who need a saviour together. Therefore, John chapter 6, the key verse given to us this morning is on the work of God is this, to believe in Him or in the one He has sent. A little bit of this background in chapter 6 of John. Uh, try to go back and read a long chapter, almost 70 verses there. Then the first part, you see the uh, scripture review there was this feeding of the 5,000. 
All right, I'm sure you're familiar with the text of feeding the 5,000. How the Lord used the uh, two fishes and five loot. <coughs> Excuse me, my throat be right. <laughs> five loads of bread uh, kind of ministered to 5,000 people. And then the Lord became popular, all right? As you know, miracle happened, people flocked to see him, curious to discover more where he came from. In fact, at one point you read, there was a desire to push him out or force him to be the king among them. Wow, since you are so popular, I think he's more popular than the new president again. Of course, they say, make him be the king. But you know, that not really Jesus' desire. So he say, he, scripture say, he adjourned and withdrew to a mountain by himself. So that gave the idea that when Jesus wanted to be alone in the mountain, more than that time we got the Father in prayer to call spiritual recharge, spiritual formation, a retreat on his own. And then the disciples were trying to get him to. But later you realize the scriptures say they caught him walking on the water towards them on the boat. That's a surprise. That's a passage that you can find in John chapter 6. And the people were also anxious to look for Jesus. Then when Jesus reappeared, they found him on the other side of the lake in verse 25. <clears throat> All right, to cut this uh, background short, I'll leave it back to you to do your own reading. But when Jesus appeared and talked to the crowd again, he said, you are looking for me, not because you have seen the signs of the miracle of feeding the 5,000. In fact, you are looking for what you have eaten, the food only. It sounds very familiar with Singaporeans. Only looking for food, all right? I mean, nothing wrong. But here the scriptures say, you look for me. Are you sure you're looking for me? Actually, you look for what you have eaten or had taken. But then the, Jesus reminded them, do not work for food that spoils. Food that only temporary or temporal does not last. You know, your morning breakfast, by evening you were gone. That's why you need to have dinner. Some still not enough, go for supper. How many of you take supper, by the way? Don't be shy. Eh? It's okay. Looking at you, maybe I can see. Eh? <laughs> can see only, eh? but no confirmation. Eh? It's okay. <laughs> food was spoiled. Don't work for food that's spoiled. But look for food that is eternal. Eh? That's the teaching here. Jesus put them away from the physical kind of needs and concern. You should be concerned more of the spiritual need, the eternity, the life after death. There will be eternal life for us. And say He is the bread of life. Remember He said, during your history, your, your ancestors have been fed by the Lord through Moses, manna, bread dropped from heaven, and your ancestors have taken it very well. And they were so grateful to Moses. But say, actually, the food came from God in heaven. Look at chapter 6 of John. But <clears throat> that kind of food may not last. But you should look for the bread of life. The eternal. And say, I am the bread of life. That's how Jesus put him into the picture. You can see in verse 35 of chapter 6 in John. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never get hungry. Or whoever believes in me never be thirsty. He covers it. Hokkien will say, you chap out. You were fool. When you have the bread of life with you. And then continue, he repeated in verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eat this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh which I will give to the life of the world. Remember, during the Holy Communion of Last Supper, he told the disciple, the bread is broken for you. This is my body. And he said it here already. The bread is my flesh, which I will give you for life of the world. And so here the spiritual lesson here is, whoever believes in him, in Jesus, will have eternal life and will never die. 
and he who are the sons of God has life. That's what John, 1 John 5, 11 shall say. And the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is his son. And whoever has the son of life does not, or have life, but whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. Just the opposite. You have the son, you have eternal life. If you don't have, you don't have. As simple as that, right? But people tend to choose without the Son of God. Very sad. So this morning, my meditation in mind, I have two lessons to share with you. First, it do not work for food that spoils. This is temporal. Or, second point, work for food that offers life. Take the bread of life that we offer to us. And that is eternal life. Pastor Anthony talked about a quality time with God. This is the quality life in God. Food that offers life, eternal life. So talking about the first point, the food that spoils refers literally to those, the worldly, worldly item. Of course, the worldly item not just food alone, but there are many other things, leisure, career, wealth, or even health. But the Bible had this to remind us solemnly that God has a season for everything. In the Old Testament, the text, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, which I normally share in the week of funeral service. Now, this is, a, to me, a very solemn reminder which says, a time for everything, a season for the activities under heavens. There is a time to born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, and a time to heal, and a time to tear down, a time to build, a time to weep, and a time to laugh. A A working hour, a holiday time. The four seasons of the year, Summer up to winter, a season for everything. Season for fruit, durian season, folks, over already, right? Mango seed season, I heard it's good and sweet. Mango season, because you don't have mango the whole year round. And you also a thought for us is, there are items on the shopping list or shopping shelves there is always an expiry date. And we human beings also got an expiry date. Depend when the Lord put the expiry date for us. Two years from now, three years from now, five years from now. But it's okay, folks. We are in the hands of the Lord. Do as much as we can when life is given. Enjoy life as, as much as you can when the Lord is given to us. But there will be a teaching for us, a season for everything. Why I bring out this? Because recently I read about this case in the media from our Singapore news. Uh, interesting to find out that the police caught a group of foreigners, at least nine men and a woman, involved in money laundering activities and forgery offences. Look, you read this? Billions of dollars. Even in the foreign media, they mentioned that Singapore police caught people with so much money involvement. And this is now under investigation. They have uh, luxury uh, cars. Is there a slide there? Yeah. And then they have bunch of money and bags. The earlier slide. Wow, I never see money so much here. <laughs> and handbags, lady, your choice is there. You want to buy some? <laughs> and then some more slide. Oh, that's all. <laughs> but the cost of that, it says it amount to one billion. And the cash that you have seen run up to 23 million in cash. Wow, boy. Hawking will say, 
จะวิเลียวเลยคำฟินิชชั่ Why want you show you this? To me, this is food that is spoiled. What happened to these folks? They can't use it. They got locked up now. These items are now all frozen or freeze under the law that stated there. Under investigation, they cannot sell or dispose it. <coughs> they just park it there for don't know how long. And the Lord gave me that revelation. Look at that, folks. There are plenty of wealth in the market. These are only food to be spoiled, temporal. You cannot bring along and so. On. But there's another good teaching from the Scripture in Proverbs 30, 308 to 9. I'm sure some of you are familiar with the text. And let me read to you in the simple read version, ERV. I just came across simple read version. We say, don't let me tell lies. There was a prayer for this wise man in writing to the Lord. Don't let me tell lies. And you know, children are also can be prone to telling lies. Right? The young and old, telling lies, telling lies is going to be quite common. So learn, don't let me tell lies and don't make me too rich or too poor. Give me only enough for food for each day. For if I'm too much, first night will say, I might deny that I need you. I mean, you don't need God if you're too much. But if I'm too poor, I might steal and bring shame to the name of my God. Very wise. Asking for a balanced life that God will give him. Neither too rich, nor too poor. Which one you want, folks? Some will say, Pastor, I don't mind being a bit rich. Then poor lah. Rich is more easier in life. But the wise man prayer is, neither here too much, or too rich because they have a side effect here. Give me amam, enough for the day, enough for some reserve, enough for the raining day. Because after all, we got to leave all this behind. A time for this and a time for that. But our concern is to seek ye first the kingdom of God. Jesus put it very well. Don't be anxious about life. Look at a bird in the air. No owner, but full of freedom, flying here and there. They even can have baby eggs and baby bird. Continue generation after generation. But if you catch that bird and put it in a cage, you suffer him or suffer her. Let it be free. God said, look at the bird in the air. They're all free. Look at the grass on the floor. Yes, one day may it turn brown. But when the rain comes, it's alright, turn green again. Don't worry about them. Do you plant the grass on the floor? No, right? In fact, you step on the grass more than we plant. But God take care of this. What about our life? But your concern to seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things, meaning your clothing, your food, your family, your children, will be taken care of. That's the promise of God. And it's going on. Look at the world. God takes care of the world very well. It's only people like you and me polluted the world. Look at the world making noise about the, the Japanese releasing the nuclear waste water. You want to take the seafood now? Barbecue? Okay, it's safe first. First, it's safe. <laughs> Folks, no problem, right? Uh, the Japanese is trying to take it and show you. Very safe. Again, there's a fear of pollution, right? Look at the fire, the wildfire in the air. Oh, a lot of smoke now. Black smoke. Who polluted the earth? People like us, human beings, not God himself. God gave this world beautifully. And so he says and reminds his people, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. Lesson two to remind us that work for food 
that offers eternal life by having the bread of life that means Jesus Christ you, you, to you or in you. He is a living bread and lasts forever. You will never go hungry or thirsty. And I like uh, Max Lucado book, my favourite author. And I got some books and I managed to flick to this book called He Chose the New. Meaning Jesus chose the new. Saying more of his crucifixion time. And here he had this write out to share with the reader. And I attracted here to share with you this morning. It's based on the text in Luke chapter 23, or chapter 22 on it. As Pedro come to a part in verse 38 to 34, he mentioned the two criminals, or call them thieves, that were hung next to Jesus, one on the left and right. And I found out the one on the right who had got saved. And this is how Max wrote in the book that this person said to Jesus, the criminal on the right side, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember the outcry that the criminal had? Well, the other one say, Ayah, why cry to him? He was like one of us. He deserved to die on the cross. Then actually the dialogue went on and say, you don't know what you're talking. They don't want to. They look at him. Actually, he was an innocent person. And so he cried to Jesus and said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Then Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Verse 43 of Luke 23. Today, you will be with me in paradise. And there is a theological struggle and say, you mean he got saved? So simple. But then the question is asked, according to Max, how this, this thief or the criminal knew that Jesus will be in his kingdom? When you look at Jesus dying on the cross, he said, remember me when you're in your kingdom. Then Max Lucado offered this insight to us. He said, perhaps, perhaps, during the time when Jesus was put on the cross, hung on the, you know who put him there? Pointless Pilate. Because he, Jesus got to appear before him and he made the judgment call. And listen to the people who say, crucify him, crucify him. So they say, okay, lah, your wish, I cruci we crucify Jesus. And so when they were about to hang him, he said, please don't forget to put this sign on top of Jesus' head. We say, Jesus, the King of Jews. There was a sign beside the thorn, the crown of thorn that on his head. In fact, they were just make a mockery for him. That he was a king. Okay, let him be the king. And die like that with a, thorn, a crown of thorn and a signboard signifying that the King of Jews now been hung on the cross. But here you realize that God has put something for a thief, a criminal to behold. But actually, we also know that Jesus himself was not actually the king, earthly king, but he was the heavenly realm king. For his kingdom will come. As the Bible says, he is the king of kings, the lords of lords. This is how we should see Jesus himself, the real king. And the real king will come. And this writing here, Max put a very short interview, and I really like the way he put about the interview the teeth had with an angel. Because he said, immediately you will be entered into paradise. So Max, in his creative writing, writing, he put this as an interview. Say that the thief now, Enter the heaven gate. He met an angel. Angel said, Before you go in, let me do an interview with you. Eh? Then the angel asked, 
how did you know that he was the king? Like ticking the box before you enter heaven. Then these teeth or the criminal were asked, answer, I saw the sign, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. I saw this sign and I believed the sign. Therefore, he made a confession and said, Jesus, please remember me when you enter your kingdom. Then the angel jogged down, saw the sign. That's right, the thief replied. The sign they put up, perhaps maybe, I don't know, by John or Peter or some other disciples. Then the angel looked at him, no, 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 folks, you got it wrong. He's pointless pilot, the Roman governor. Then the thief replied, you must be kidding. From a Roman governor, talk about King Jesus. He should talk about uh, Julius Caesar, the emperor, not King Jesus. Well, the angel say, since you have made your confession and you never know how God works in this way, that even using an outsider, a non-Jew, who could recognize Jesus as the king of Jews. Because when Pointus Pilate put that word down, the Jewish priests and the Jewish authority rejected. They said, never put his name as king of the Jews. He will never be our king. The real king is yet to be the Messiah. But here this criminal, the thief, he saw the sign and he believed that Jesus indeed is the king and kings of king, and the Lord of Lord. So here the supply element is there and the angel reminded the thief, if God can use a burning bush to call Moses and God can call or use a donkey to convict a prophet prophesying and God can use a big fish to turn the life of Jonah around. God can use many things to let people see him. But your job is to show them the sign. So here is a reflection and the conclusion of the interview. The angel mark, you pass folks, please enter your heavenly home. Because you saw the sign, you know who Jesus is. You're welcome to the eternal home. So here we learn as a reflection that at 11 hour of the thief's life, he was given the opportunity, the moment to know Jesus by looking at Jesus himself, also the sign to confirm that he is the king of the Jews. And to recognize that Jesus did not die for his own sin, but he died for the sins of others. And that Jesus himself had mentioned, if you come to me, you will be safe. All you need to do is to open your heart to him. as what the dying thief had done. He opened his heart to Jesus. And he got welcome to the heavenly home. And so here, the teaching is a key word this morning, the word belief. As even in John 6, just now, talk about 29, you need to believe the one that God sent, Jesus. So here is a challenge to remind us that God can use any situation, any occasion, any people that you meet or face, while you make your travels, or holidays, or going marketing, or walk around, and also to see the people coming to the fun fair. As I say in love, folks, the fun fair is more for the people outside the church than people inside the church. Amen? Alright, I mean, we thank God for the fun 
fellowship that we can create for the community. The fun fair is more aimed at reaching the community. Your neighbour, your colleagues, your friends, quote unquote, perhaps even your enemy can come and join us. Because we want them to lead them to the sign that Jesus is the King of the Jews. And nobody else. For because of Him, He or she will receive eternal life that God has given to you and to me. So it will be good for us, the opportunity, the given, to proclaim and to share, and to invite people, either to the fun fair to come on 9 of September, or to the Alpha course, that people can come and join us. I'm sure some of you have benefited and joined the Alpha course, and baptized and become member of the church. We praise God for your incoming and join the fellowship of believers. Rather to stand alone in the world. In fact, also invite them to come to the church. Uh, this morning, I can now see at this time more people. But at the 8 o'clock, there was one section still empty uh, for people to come and join us. So folks, do our best. Uh, this coming uh, fun fair or other the outreach events that we have for the people, the community, your loved ones at home, to know the Saviour Himself. <laughs> and I pray that we will truly put our heart together to know Him and to make Him known. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you for this time of meditation to remind us we have the Saviour, the living bread, and through Him we have eternal life. And so we pray for each one of us here to continue to grow in the faith and be drawn closer to the Saviour and to know that His grace is always sufficient for us to live as disciples of Jesus Christ and also to make known to others about Him and to have the opportunity to share and invite people to know You. So we pray at this time that you continue to give us opportunities to be your ambassadors for Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.